Now! Go, Reen! Take the new Class 7 with you! <gasps> Got it! Let's move! <sighs> no. We need to handle things here. Yeah. All the old folks down there can take care of the rest. Man, I'm pooped. You can go take a rest too, Lammy. Milliam. Claire. Lecter. This may be a selfish decision on my part, but... I'd like to see what my younger brother is capable of. I'll show you exactly that, Rufus! We'll help out too! Arcus, activate! We'll do all we can to support you! There seems to be more. Let's continue onward. Sit! Ha! Ready! Sit! hey -ya! There!
Ready! In sealing itself away for so long, it seems to have lost both its consciousness and true appearance. In addition, the Vermilion Knight has taken in an immense amount of mana and is nearly fully operational. Indeed, my voice has finally reached you. It appears the ritual of the end is quite extraordinary indeed. Understood. Good luck, all. Seems like a good spot for a break. Going out there, we may come face to face with death itself. But we need to bet everything on this chance. Class 7 Special Operations, move out! Yes! yes. Highness, what have you done? Oh, don't worry, she's fine, for now. But putting that aside for the moment, you really should greet the hosts of this little event before me. It's only proper. So you've arrived, Rainschwarzer. I see you've brought your students, too. 
uninvited guests though you may be, I welcome you all the same. We don't need a welcome from the likes of you. And you, the other one up there. Professor Lumen, or should I say, the chief of the gnomes and head of the Black Workshop. Black Alberic! <laughs> I suppose I should say it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm surprised you know that name, though. Did the Crimson Witch or the Grosvitter tell you about me? Well, I'm glad I don't need to waste time explaining. I'm rather a busy man, you see. I can't say I approve of his tone. I'm going to ask you two things. First off, what exactly is the Great Twilight? And second, what do you plan to do with Altina? <laughs> Astute questions indeed. It's difficult to explain the Twilight in a succinct manner. But I suppose it can be described as something which will lift the curse that lingers over all of Erebonia. Or perhaps it would be more accurate to say, it completes it. So that curse is the Great One. It also seems to have some relation to Valimar. You want to complete the curse? What is wrong with you? After the Septarian of Flame, Arc Rouge, and the Septarian of Earth, Lost Zem, battled 1200 years ago, the resulting Septarian of Steel was divided into seven pieces by the Gnomes and the Hexen Clan. Though this succeeded in diffusing its power, it did nothing to suppress its curse. It is due to this failure that the Dark Dragon, the War of the Lions, and the Hundred Days War all took place. Of course, the same goes for the Civil War and the Emperor being shot. What? The Dark Dragon and what happened with Ash aside. Are you saying the curse had something to do with all those wars? <laughs> Don't you find it strange? No matter the reason, massacring your own people as an excuse to start a war is... unheard of in modern times. The risk of being caught far outweighs any benefits of such a scheme. Normally, one's logic would put a stop to such thoughts. The masterminds of the Hommel incident were minor noble officers. As individuals, they weren't especially sinister or anything of the sort. Isn't that right, Your Excellency? Correct. For better or worse, they were ordinary men. Though they were facing pressure from the four great houses and being goaded by Ouroboros, those were not the only causes. During the hearings afterward, they claimed, it was a moment of weakness and they couldn't believe what they'd done. No way! Regarding myself and the Chancellor, tragedies like Hum. At times, this nation will make the most tragically foolish decisions. The history of Erebonia is smeared with blood and alight with flames, more than any other country. I see. So that's what happened. Then... Does that mean... It was all because of the Great One's curse? <laughs> oh, don't misunderstand. It was not the sole cause of those offense. However, something plants a twisted black seed in people and society. I believe you've all seen the results of such a seed firsthand. Could it be? Ash was implanted 14 years ago during the tragedy of Hamel? <laughs> Correct. I'd also like to make clear we had no hand in that. Once afflicted, he was doomed to cause some manner of incident one day. In all likelihood, no one could have removed what was planted within him. 
Not even the goddess herself. No. <sighs> Don't you find it ridiculous for us to continue to be at the mercy of such a thing? That is why I sought to take this curse and use it for my own ends. The Great One is mighty, but as its physical form was divided, its ability to affect this world is limited. However, were it possible to reforge its scattered pieces into an even stronger being, I could use it to drown the world in conflict. The endless struggles leading humanity to ever greater heights. Truly inspiring, Chancellor Osborne. You monster! This is beyond absurd. Unbelievable. <gasps> and the Great Twilight is what will lead to all that? Then both Altina and that beast are the keys. Indeed. That creature lying over there is the Black Holy Beast. Originally sent by Adios to watch over the Septarian of Earth. It was one of the two holy beasts who worked alongside the gnomes and the Hexen clan to suppress the Great One. It was corrupted after taking a majority of the curse into itself 900 years ago. It then sealed itself and the sacred land away in the abyss. But by slaughtering it with the proper tool, the curse in it will be released. With the advent of the Twilight, the Great One can be made whole. The completion of that tool, the sword, was crucial to our plan. It required a being fully synchronized with a combat shell, one who is both human and weapon. The raw material from which a blade capable of slaying a holy beast can be forged. A blade to be wielded by a divine knight. That is the 74th and final model. A being which can sublimate into the Sword of the End in exchange for its own life. No. Is that the reason Milliam and Altina were created? Yeah, guess so. Oh. Uh, this is all just too crazy. How could you be part of this, Prince Cedric? I knew their plan would be appalling, but this has surpassed even my expectations. How do you justify all this? Don't you have a family you care about? How do you think your daughter would feel, knowing the awful things her father has done? That was nothing more than a fleeting version of me. I am the Chief of the Gnomes and Head of the Black Workshop. I have abandoned my life as a human and taken on this mission in order to realize a grand wish. I am nothing more than a humble servant who does his master's will. To that end, I have assembled a host of different technologies for the sake of Oz's creation. I stole the process for creating homunculi from the alchemists of Crossbell. I provided the mages with the technology required for the magic knights during the Dark Ages. I distributed experimental weapons to high-ranking Jaegers to collect combat data. I joined Ouroboros's 13 factories to get closer to Epstein's top disciple. I even took advantage of the continent's leading manufacturer of heavy machinery, Rhineford. Oh, father. My lady.
Oh, there's no end to them. Yeah, they'll probably keep coming back until the main show is over. There you two are. I see your mission was a success. That's... The Crimson Wings. Will they make it in time, I wonder? Well, no point in worrying. All we can do now is leave things to them. We have our own duty to fulfill. Now, to Heimdall Airport! Yes, my lord! 